All right, I think we're ready to go. So uh, welcome to class, ELD1. We are going to be continuing with the Black Pearl. I know you can't plan for pandemics. You can't plan for the end of the world. I'm sorry. Hey, I help you guys. I hope you guys are doing okay. Uh, make sure you keep in contact over email. If you have trouble, email Ms. Gallo or Mrs. Salazar or myself, and we will work towards making sure your problems get fixed. So we're going to continue reading the Black Pearl. We are on uh, page 95, chapter 12. I'm going to do my best to do this. Okay. We are going to... Uh, Share this. I probably should have had this queued up first. My mistake. Sorry. Give me just a moment. Almost there. Oh, too far. All right, let's see. All right, so we are on chapter 12. Where'd it go? <sighs> Among the 32 men of the Salazar fleet, driven on the rocks of Punta Maldon Mal Mal Maldonado, only one survived, the Seviano. On the fourth day after the storm, services were held for our dead. The church again was decorated with flowers and filled with people from the town and the hills, and many who would not find a place stood outside. How strange, everyone said, that in less than a month, the two greatest happenings in all the history of La Paz had taken place. First, it was the finding of the Great Pearl. Then it was the coming of the Great Storm that wrecked the fleet and drowned so many. Nobody could put what he thought into words, but there were those who felt that the two happenings were joined together in some mysterious way. Of these, I was one. And as I knelt beside my mother, Father Gallardo spoke on that sad morning. I listened with only half my heart to what he said. My eyes were fixed upon the Madonna. She stood in her niche, all dressed in white, and on her face was a smile, the sweet smile that I often had seen before. She looked out at the kneeling mourners, smiling as if nothing ever had happened to the fleet and its men on the rocks of Punta Maldonado. Father Gallardo was speaking to my father and his generous gift to the church, especially the gift of the beautiful pearl. At that moment, a ray of light fell through, the, through a window full upon the Madonna. It shone upon the pearl she held in her hand and set it aglow. And I, as I gazed at the pearl, I began to wonder for the first time why such a magnificent gift had not been protected, had not protected my father against the storm. I wondered about this as I filed out of the church with the others. And as I stood in the plaza and talked to some of my friends, and when the Seviano came up to me, put his hand on my shoulder, I was still wondering why the Madonna and her pearl had failed to stay the coming of the storm. The big pearl of heaven, the Seviano said, did not bring us luck. Always before I had paid no heed <clears throat> to his scoffings, but now his words somehow echoed what I was thinking. And yet I drew myself up and spoke to him sharply. The pearl brought you luck, I said, or else you would not be here among the living. It was not the pearl, he said. I'm here because I am a good swimmer. While we stood there, now saying little to each other, I saw at a distance the old man walking quietly up and down. He kept casting a glance over the departing throng and toward the church, but never at me, as if he did not know that I was there. And yet, when I left the Sevillano, I heard the steps and turned to see him not three feet away. I'll tell you this once more, the old man said. The pearl belongs to Monte Diablo, and I tell you because it's you who found the pearl. I made no reply to him and soon lost myself in the crowd. I did not go home as I had planned to do, to be with my mother and sister, but went back to the church instead. 
I thought I would talk to Father Gallardo and tell him of the doubts that had overtaken me. He was not in his cell behind the altar, nor could I find him anywhere. As I came to the niche where the Madonna stood, I knelt and closed my eyes. But all I could think of was the boats lying broken on the rocks of the Maldonado, and my father dead, and the old man's warning. I opened my eyes and looked up at the Madonna. I looked at the pearl she held in her hand, outstretched as if she wished me or someone to take it. I rose and glanced around the church. It was deserted. I called Father Gallardo's name, grasped the pearl. Oh, excuse me, I skipped a line. I called Father Gallardo's name, but got no answer. Then quickly I reached out, grasped the pearl, lifted it from Madonna's hand, thrust it deep inside my pocket, and walked softly down the aisle. I had closed the big door when I came in, and now, as I opened it and took two steps, I found myself face to face with a Seviano. I go back to get my sombrero, he said. If someone in this town of thieves has not already stolen it. I stepped aside for him to pass. He drew back and looked at me. It was only a fleeting look, but as I walked on, I asked myself if in that quick glance, he had not seen the bulge the pearl made in my pocket. I crossed the plaza, turning around several times, for I half expected the old man to be following me. And as I reached the gate, I looked for him to step out from the trees. The great pearl was found missing early that evening by an altar boy. I knew that someone had discovered the theft, for the bell in the church began to toll. Ding, ding, ding. At the first sound of the bell, my mother, who was writing a letter, dropped her pen and looked at me. What does the bell mean? she asked. It calls the town to prayer. It is not the hour for prayer. Then some boys are playing around in the belfry, I said. The bell went on tolling, and in a short time, Father Gallardo came to the door, out of breath. The pearl is gone, he cried. Gone. Gone, I asked. Stolen. I jumped to my feet and followed him back to the church. People were gathering outside. He led me down the aisle and pointed to the niche where the Madonna stood with her hand held out empty. A crowd had followed us, and there were many ideas about who had stolen the great pearl. Someone said that an Indian she knew had stolen it. Another said he had seen a strange man running away from the church. As I listened, and the woman wept, and f the women wept, and Father Gallardo wrung his hands, it was on my tongue to say, I have the pearl. It is in my room, hidden under my pillow. Wait, and I will get it. Then I thought of the wrecked ships at the Maldonado, and again I heard the old man's voice, as clear as if, as if he were there in the church beside me, speaking his solemn admonition. I slipped away and went home, and after supper, with the pearl hidden in my shirt, I went down to the beach, taking a roundabout path so as to not be seen. I searched until I found a boat that belonged to a man I knew. It was not a boat for a swift voyage, being too large for me to handle well, but there were no others. When the moon came up, I started for the lagoon where the Monte Diablo lived or where the old man said he lived, and I now half believe to be the truth. All right, end of chapter 12. So let's see here. Um, let's see. If we can do a little bit of review here. Uh, I've got this one queued up. So let's share this here. All right, chapter 12. But there were those who felt that the two happenings were joined together in some mysterious way. So as we have talked about many times, does the Monte Diablo actually have power? Does stealing the pearl from the Monte Diablo mean you are cursed? Did finding the pearl and the storm just happen to happen at the same time? Is it coincidence? Or are these events actually connected? 
Are they two separate things or is it really kind of one thing? So that's the question that's going on here. All right, to say stay uh, means, you know, stop. <sighs> um, when it says her pearl, it's talking about the Madonna, Mother Mary. Okay, and it had failed to stay the coming of the storm. Giving her the pearl had not stopped the storm. So that's what that means there. Sombrero, if you don't speak Spanish, you might not know, but sombrero is a hat. So the Seviano comes back into the church right after Ramon steals the pearl. And the Seviano goes, I wonder where my hat is. Hopefully someone hasn't stolen it. Hmm. Uh, the belfry is the top of a church tower where the bell is. So you've seen a church before. Think of the church bell at the top. And that's where they were dinging the bell. Ding, ding. All right. It was on my tongue to say, Ramon, which means uh, uh, he wanted to. It was on his tongue. He felt like he could say, I did it. I did it. But he doesn't. He doesn't say it. He wants to, but he doesn't. It was on his tongue, but he stopped. All right. Roundabout path. Uh, as you can see here from this image, uh, this little kid, he is trying to uh, get home. And you can see he goes all over the place. It's a very roundabout path. Instead of just going straight, you kind of meander and wander and twist and turn. All right. So, you guys, strange times. I hope you enjoyed chapter uh, 12. And we will do this again at another time. So, let's try this. Stop presenting. You should see me. All right. Um, check in every day with all of your teachers on Google Classroom. All right, you guys, stay safe. Take care. Bye.